This week on Houston Newsmakers, as early voting gets underway starting tomorrow, the latest poll results from the University of Houston Hobby School of Public Affairs. Most likely voters were asked a number of questions, including who they preferred for mayor. Incumbent Sylvester Turner would seem to have an advantage, but does he? Political novice Tony Busby is spending millions to try to make a difference. The question is, are those dollars impacting the minds of the voters? And if so, is it enough to matter? There are other well-known candidates in the race who have worked hard to make what is expected to be a runoff against Mayor Turner. Do they have a chance? Why or why not? Could the Trump effect impact local elections? And much more on this special pre-election edition of Houston Newsmakers. From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers, where I'm going to spend the uh, next half hour with Dr. Mark Jones with uh, Rice University. He's a political scientist and Baker Institute fellow. And for this purpose this morning, he's also a research associate for the University of Houston Hobby School of Public Affairs. Thank you for being here this morning. Oh, thank you. We have uh, the just released survey results right. that are available as of this morning when we're airing this program here. Yes. And you asked several questions about a lot of different things including priorities of voters who might be voting for mayor and what the what they think the direction of the city is how was this survey structured how did you ask the questions and, and why well the survey was done during the first nine days of October we did telephone calls live operators not robo calls uh, to likely voters in the city of Houston and the surveys were conducted in both English and Spanish we did a mixture of both cell phones as well as landlines because increasingly there are a lot of people out mm -hmm. there with only which who only have cell phones or never answer their landline. So this really is a, the, the second m poll of this area uh, about the mayor's race specifically. Right, this is the second major public poll that we've had on the mayor's race. It may be the last, I don't know. And the timing of it was such that over the last few weeks, there have been some negative things coming out. There's right. it's a lot of negative things in this campaign, quite right. frankly. But this happened, this poll was taken during that period of time. So maybe some reflection of that in the poll, maybe? Yeah, it, it should be reflected if it's going to have an impact because the internship scandal related to Mayor Turner uh, came out uh, the night before we started polling. Mm -hmm. So then we polled in the subsequent nine days after the internship scandal came out. So that should be baked into most of the people's responses. All right, let's take a look at some of the results. This show is that uh, the Mayor Turner, uh, at this point, we're talking about Mayor support, Mayor Turner with 43.5%, uh, yeah. and that red number is likely voters. The most likely voters, yeah. is that the most reliable group? Well, that's the group. The all likely voters are people who said they would definitely vote or probably vote. The most likely voters are the people who said they're definitely going to get out there and vote. And you can see there that, yes, yeah, Sylvester Turner has 43% of the most likely voters, 43.5% of the likely voters. And it's pretty similar. Tony Busby's 23 or 24%. Bill King's eight, around 8%. Uh, Dwight Boykins is 7 or 8%. Sue Lovell's down at 1%. And they're about, you know, 17 or 16% of the Houstonians are still undecided. Okay, so the undecided. Vote. Let's talk about that, because yeah. could that be a big deciding yeah. factor? Although you look at the numbers and you see the big gap between Mayor Turner and Tony Busby, if you yeah. took all the people who are undecided who right. then would vote for Tony Busby, for example, which is not likely to happen, right. then that could make a difference. So what does the undecided vote do in this whole scenario? Well, we drilled into the undecided vote with some other questions regarding their preferences and their evaluations of the candidates. And the, those data show is about one third of those undecided voters are, try, are leaning between Mayor Turner and one of the other candidates. Uh, and other groups are leaning between either uh, different pairs of candidates or they may not turn out to vote. And always, you know, a, a, some proportion of the undecided voters are undecided because they're not going to vote. You know, the, the optimists in me would like to think that ethnicity has little to do with any of this sort yeah. of thing. Right. But when you look at the poll, you look yeah. at some of the ways that it aligns, um, yeah. you clearly see that it falls along racial lines in this scenario. Yeah. Right. Uh, Mayor Turner has overwhelming support in the African-American community, closing in on 60 percent. Only Dwight Boykins at 13.5 uh, is in the double digits. In the Anglo community, uh, whites, Anglos, uh, you have essentially a split. That is, Tony Busby has a slight advantage, 37.2 percent, over Mayor Turner at 34.4 percent. And then among 
Latinos, uh, Turner is dominant there, not as dominant as among African Americans, but about 42.6%, and only Busby is in the double digits at 13.1. Well, I noticed that uh, when you talk about the second choice candidates, they also fall. So if somebody who's voting for Turner, and you ask them, okay, if you're not going to vote for Turner, who would you vote for? Right, and half of those individuals say, if I'm not going to vote for Turner, I'm going to vote for Dwight Boykins, and about half of the people who are going to vote for Dwight Boykins, uh, if they aren't going to vote for Boykins, they say they're going to vote for Turner. Yeah. And, and you see that, you know, that affects potentially the runoff as well. Yeah, I noticed that uh, those people who may not vote for Busby said they would vote for King. King right, and, and vice versa. Yeah, King, I said effectively Busby and King are fishing in the same pond. King more, or Busby more successfully than King, and Turner and Boykins are fishing in the same pond. Turner more successfully than Boykins. Now, you, you, when you talk about this whole scenario, the mayor's race, uh, when they talk about the favorability, right. that's not the same thing as who you're going to vote for. Right, that's just your attitude. Do you have a favorable or unfavorable position regarding uh, the, the different candidates? And you can see a, a majority of people have a favorable opinion of Mayor Turner, 56% to 36%. Tony Busby has his supporters, about 32% are, have a favorable opinion, 387 do not. And then you have Dwight, Bill King and Dwight Boykins, who on average people view them favorably. But the key number there is uh, in the third column, yeah. that is more than half of uh, likely voters don't know enough about Bill King to have an opinion one way or another. And that gets to over two thirds, that's 68.7% for someone like Dwight Boykins, and over four fifths for someone like Sue Lovell, which shows that even today, after the campaigns have been going on for a while, a month a month before election sure. day, two thirds of voters don't really know much about Dwight Boykins. More than half don't know about much about Bill King. And that doesn't say an awful lot about the way people pay attention because Dwight Boykins is a sitting council member and right. Sue Lovell was a former sitting council member. Right. Uh, the number, the unfavorable number for Mayor Turner. You surprised that it's as high as it is in 36 or so where it is 36.1, considering that you know that it, that's not much different than what Busby is in terms of the unfavorable. Right, I think, but it's with Turner, I think the other column's important where you, pretty much everybody has an opinion about Mayor Turner. It's either positive or negative. So he has his detractors, but his supporters are much greater than his number of detractors. And in an election, it's whoever gets the most support wins. This whole problem, you talk about uh, trends uh, presented by favorable uh, or unfavorable. Um, some things have happened, as you talked, you alluded to this earlier. Uh, our Mario Diaz did a story here uh, talking about an intern or hire made by the city. And it, it got a lot of traction, and yeah. some of the opponents used that yeah. to go ahead and jump on the bandwagon as well. How much has negative campaigning played a, a role in what's going on here? Well, I think it, that probably is filtering somewhat into Turner's negatives. That's one of the reasons why they're as high as they are. But I think what I think what we see is that the internship scandal doesn't seem to have adversely affected his support among his, his the people who like him. Mm -hmm. His supporters are still with him. I think in part they probably have a lot of that already sort of baked into their opinion of Sylvester Turner. They know sometimes that he skates into some gray areas within our campaign finance legislation and in terms of ethics legislation. Perhaps not over on the, essentially the legal side, but sometimes in the area that is somewhat questionable. So they already know that about him, and so they're not going to change their opinion. Uh, the extent to which it's going to have an effect, it could reduce turnout among some of his supporters, but right now I'm not really seeing that. The numbers, though, seem so large that it looks like, okay, the only thing we're thinking about is who's going to make the runoff, if there is going to be a runoff. Right. Let's talk about that coming up, though. What are the chances that there will be a runoff? We're going to talk about that. The Harvey School of Public Affairs looked at runoff scenarios and the most likely winners in those various scenarios. We'll talk about that when Houston Newsmakers continues. The vaping health crisis has killed more than two dozen people. Why it's so hard to quit and where to get help in Houston? What to do when you get thrown in Facebook jail or even worse, when Facebook cancels your account completely? Monday morning on Channel 2 News Today. With two boys, I know about suspicious odors. But Centerpoint Energy taught me something important. If I smell rotten eggs, it might be a gas leak. I should leave on foot immediately and call both Centerpoint Energy and 911 from a safe location. I also never store flammables like paint or gasoline near my natural gas appliances. One spark is all it takes to ignite fumes. Centerpoint Energy provides tips to help you keep your family safe. Centerpoint Energy. Always there. It's not enough to treat over 200,000 hearts a year or to use minimally invasive surgical techniques if we don't recognize that for your heart, 
It's a first. And tailor rehabilitation to your needs. Because it's not enough to treat your heart like it's the only one that matters. If we can't get you back to what matters most. Memorial Hermann. Advancing health. Personalizing care. If you call Shotgun to reserve a seat in the front of the car, what do you shout if you want to sit in the back? The 2019 Volkswagen Atlas with best-in-class third-row legroom. Come in now to your Volkswagen dealer and lease the spacious and refined 2019 Atlas SE with technology for just $389 a month. The state of Texas is now investigating one of our local school districts, and so are we. Hi, how are you, sir? I work for Channel 2. Hi, Dr. Voss. Hey, Joel Weiss, I'm on with Channel 2. Channel 2 investigates allegations of nepotism when family hires family. Monday at 10. Welcome back to Houston Newsmakers. My guest this morning, Dr. Mark Jones, Rice University political scientist and Baker Institute fellow and a research associate for the University of Houston Hobby School of Public Affairs, which has conducted a survey of likely and most likely voters about a number of topics. Yeah. You, you're into all kind of stuff, aren't you? Oh, yeah. We, Political science-wise, you're everywhere. Doing everything we can. Yeah. It's, it's, how fascinating is it to try to get feedback from people about what's going on? And then afterward, do you compare what the estimation was beforehand and see how accurate you were on the backside? Right. And we always want to know, sort of target and benchmark how well our prediction is. Now, we do, we're doing it a month before Election Day, and there's a lot that can happen. But it helps to have these po polls to really sort of add some data and some empirical context to sort of things that people are thinking about. It also, I think, really helps us because a lot of us, like yourself and my, myself, are who are inside and watching this all the time, it's helpful to think, what do regular voters think about all these issues? Because they aren't attuned to it as we are, and so it really helps to shape the reality of when, the, when it goes to the polls, it's not the elites that are voting. Right. They vote, but they're a minuscule proportion. It's the voters, and so it's helpful to know what do the voters think. And in this case, the scenario is we know that Tony Busby is using a lot of his own money. Right. Um, it looks like the way the, po the numbers were looking in our first segment, we looked at it. It m money is really the driving piece of all of this, is it not? Oh, it is. Uh, so Tony Busby has his own personal fortune from his success as a trial attorney, and so he's spending probably about $10 million of his own money. Sylvester Turner, being mayor, gets all of the donations by architects, uh, co uh, construction firms, vendors, people who do, do business with the city, plus has the advantage of just the bully pulpit of the, the being the mayor's office, so he gets to give the key of the city to Travis Scott and gets all that type of publicity. Then you have Bill King and Dwight Boykins, who are very strong strong candidates, but simply have not had the money to get out there and introduce themselves and educate voters about themselves. And you see that, I think, especially with Dwight Boykins, who has a very underfunded campaign where two-thirds of voters don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. But we do know from, like, our data show that in his district, he's very popular. So the idea would be if Dwight Boykins suddenly won the lottery and had $5 million and chose to spend it on commercials, he would likely vault up much higher in terms of public opinion. It's simply voter, because once voters learn learn about Dwight Boykins, on average, they tend to like him quite a bit. It's simply that two-thirds of voters don't know anything about him. And that has to do with money and how much you can get the name out there. Sue right. Lovell's a council member, yeah. former council member. Right. Same sort of scenario. Right, and she's even lower down because she is an ex-council member, and she has even less money than Dwight Boykins. What does it say about the whole process? Because sometimes you get your idea, and you get your following, and then you get your money. Or you get your money, and then you get your followers. There are a lot of people yeah. who are running in this race. That's right. oh, it was almost a, do a dozen or so running. Right. Right. A lot of those people have ideas that they think are really good, but if they don't have goo gobs of money, it's not going to be. Yeah, if you don't have money to educate voters about yourself and introduce yourself to voters, it's a really uh, uphill struggle. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the potential runoff. You think that there's a pretty good chance it's going to be a runoff based upon what you see so far? Uh, I think what the data is showing us right now is that Turner is going to win somewhere between, say, mid 40s and very low 50s. Uh, if he obviously if he wins in the mid 40s, we're going to have a runoff. But I, there is always the possibility that he could pop just above 50 percent and avoid it. Uh, if, but I think right now, if, we, if I had to do a 50-50 bet, I'd say it's more likely we're going to have a runoff than not have a runoff. All right, let's take a look at the scenarios. Let's say Turner is in a runoff against Tony Busby. Your numbers indicate that it's a, it's a pretty big jump there between Busby and Turner. In this right, case. and there's some people that are not going to vote, and then there's some people that are undecided, but still, but even before you tr factor in the undecideds and the people who aren't going to vote, Turner has an absolute majority against Busby. Okay, Turner and King uh, is not anywhere close to what it was before. 
before King was within one point right. the last time around. What do you think the difference is this time? Was it just the Busby's entrance into this? Uh, Busby has essentially cut support for, uh, for King, but I think a lot of it also, Turner is now the mayor. Right. Uh, before he was not the mayor, and before King had a lot of support among Democrats, now King has almost no support among Democrats. Let's talk about the, the Boykins matchup against Turner, and that, that's a, a bigger margin there as well. Right. Not quite as big as the margin is uh, between uh, Sylvester Turner and Sue Lovell, yeah. which shows an even bigger margin. Right. They're not surprising. Right, and I think with, Boy with both Boykins and Lovell, that's also reflecting that they simply aren't well known by a lot of voters. There could be a lot of reasons a mayor's race or uh, any race for that matter can mm -hmm. become competitive. One of those could be dissatisfaction with the way the city's working. You asked a question yeah. about how the city's going in the right direction yeah. or wrong direction. Yeah. How important is it to ask that question as a underlying current, if, if you will, with what's going on in the, in the voting? Well, it's a nice question to get the people's sense of how are things going in the city? Are things going well or not well? And what we see is that a majority of Houstonians are happy with the way the city is moving. There is a minority that aren't, but there are far more people that are fa have a favorable view. And that certainly benefits the incumbent, because one of the things that you always ask as an incumbent are, do you like how things are going or are you unsatisfied? And if you're, you like how things are going, then you're more likely to vote for that person. The person who's running in the race, and we've seen by the political ads, they want to make sure that people know, hey, things aren't right, the right. streets are bad, the right. city's not doing what they have to do with flooding. This poll seems to contradict that a little bit. Well, it shows that at least among majority voters, they, they reckon, I mean, majority of voters recognize Houston has a problem with flooding and has, a, and others view it has have a problem with crime. Mm -hmm. But the people with flooding view that within the context of the problems that the city's doing a good job addressing those are as well as could be expected. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so now you think that uh, President Trump that's a national thing. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a local thing. Right. But you asked this question as well about voter opinions. Let's take a look at this because basically you ask people who were uh, uh, Trump supporters right. if they had a favorable or unfavorable opinion of all of these different people. Right. And I guess it's not a shock. This is supposed to be a nonpartisan race, by the right. way. Right. But this kind of shows that it clearly is not. No, we know that a little more than 60% of Houstonians uh, have an unfavorable view of Trump, and a little more, about a third of them have a favorable view. But you can see there's a real split. Uh, almost all Turner voters have a very unfavorable view of uh, President Trump, 85%, and it's the same for Dwight Boykins. You flip it over and it's the reverse for Busby and King. An overwhelming majority of Busby and King voters have a favorable opinion of uh, the president, especially uh, Tony Busby voters. And that's kind of digging into a lot of the way our politics is locally and the whole state. Is it not the way right. things have trended more right. blue in this county and this city? Right, yeah. Uh, the, Houston, the Houston elector, the people who are going to vote in this election, are going to be about 55 percent Democrat and about 33 percent Republican and so there's a strong Democratic advantage within the city of Houston. We're going to continue to talk about that because the Trump impact answer uh, there's a lot going on with that and just ahead about what you talked about there we're going to talk about how people feel about what's most important about federal state and locally elected officials as well and how that interacts with what's going on in the city. We'll do that. It's Big Brands Bonus Month at MTB. Get a $70 mail-in rebate on select Cooper tires. And for a limited time, get them installed for free. Plus, take advantage of our $19.99 oil change only at MTB. It takes a titan to lend a hand, even when their hands are full. So at Nissan, we build trucks with the tech to keep moving. We're calling all titans of the neighborhood, the outdoors, and the community. You've got work to do, and we've got your truck. Get 0% financing for up to 72 months on Titan. I'm Tony Busby, and Houston is at a crossroads. Will we be the city we know we can be, or will we let politicians make us into the city we are all a little scared we may become? If you wonder why we can't fix the streets, prepare for the next flood, or make this city safe, it's because City Hall is for sale. Are you tired of it yet? When I'm your mayor, we're going to make these streets drivable. When I'm your mayor, we're going to fast-track flood relief. When I'm your mayor, we're going to make sure that you don't worry about your car getting broken into. We're going to do better. I'm Tony Busby. Let's get Houston back on course. The 2019 RAV4. Don't forget the carabiners. Copy that. With loads of cargo space. 
You find them? Probably. And the latest tech. We still on for spelunking tomorrow? Totally. I, I love that. Bye. It was made for a more adventurous you. Right now, get $1,500 customer cash. Or qualified lessees can lease the adventurous new 2019 RAV4 LE for only $249 a month. Hurry in today. Toyota, let's go places. It's cash back Tober at Cons Home Plus. Get your tax back. Up to $500 on your furniture purchase. Plus an additional $200 cash back when you add a TV. Get cash back offers all month long at Cons Home Plus. And welcome back to Houston Newsmakers with Dr. Mark Jones and the results of the survey done by the UH Hobby School of Public Affairs. This information available today for the first time. We've seen some of the results uh, about various topics and political races. But let's talk about some of the results that uh, when you ask, what was the most important problem facing Houston? That was the question. Right. And I guess I shouldn't be all that shocked that flooding came out so high in this poll. Right, and this is especially, in, this was done in uh, the first week of October, so it's right after Imelda. Right. And so we're especially getting a lot of people saying flooding is a major problem. There's a substantial proportion, though, that say crime's a problem as well, 22%. And then we see some more mixture, pro rising property taxes, traffic congestion, road quality, down in the high single digits. I was surprised that traffic wasn't as high, uh, was not higher, because we've heard yeah. so much about that in a lot of the national polls show Houston not doing well yeah. and I think the uh, the uh, Kinder Institute uh, report also showed yeah. traffic as being rather high up there. It's a problem, but when we, this question asked people what they thought the most serious problem, the most important problem facing the city. And I think, you know, flooding is the, flooding fl threatens the viability of Houston as a city. Mm -hmm. Traffic congestion does not. Yeah, okay, good point. All right, you asked uh, opinions of federal, state, and local officials right. as well. I thought this was interesting because you asked, um, had, President Trump had a 32% favorable rating right. in this. D uh, Governor Abbott, yeah. Did pretty well in this poll. Right, and, and that's especially, he, this is a blue city. This is a city where 55% of the respondents are Democrats, 33% Republicans, and shows that Governor Abbott's uh, very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, if you're a Democrat looking towards uh, the 2022 uh, election, you may say, well, it's going to be a little tough to beat him. Right, right. Alina, I'll go on her numbers there yeah. were about 20%. Uh, yeah. and you think 30% uh, almost, 28% there, yeah. unfavorable 20%. Yeah. I think that has to do with just her new into the position yeah. more than anything else? Well, she isn't well known and she does, she has her supporters, but also some detractors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Chris Brown, yeah. that's relatively new, that whole process about the land that he had right. sold or whatever. This shows an unfavorable of only 5%, but that also, not shown on this column, yeah. is the people who are either undecided or don't know. Well, yeah, you have a lot about a uh, little, um, more than two thirds of uh, people don't know who Chris Brown is or don't know enough about him to have an opinion mm -hmm. but but those who do have a, it's like a four to one favorable advantage so how are you feeling about the whole evaluation of this survey you sit back you look at the numbers you digest them a little bit yeah. what are you hoping that voters and potential voters will take away from this as they look through it today if they go on our website and they go to the yeah. school survey yeah. to look at the site what do you hope that they'll take away from? I think one thing it helps to know where the different candidates are and who are their who supports the different candidates and who are the most viable candidates I think also it probably it sends a signal to voters that if you don't know a lot about Dwight Boykins or Bill King, uh, you may want to look into them because people who do know them have a favorable opinion of them. And so even though they're in the single digits, uh, there are people that deserve consideration. For somebody who's thinking about running for office, and we've had several people on this program who are running for mayor yeah. who are nowhere close to the numbers here and yeah. cho showing the numbers in the polls, yeah. um, it, it, it could be disappointing to them right. knowing that they may have great ideas they may right. have a, a group of people who tell them they can do this right. but they don't show up in these numbers yeah the unfortunate thing for the city with the city of Houston and the way campaign finance works is if you don't either have personal wealth or access to institutional wealth, that is construction firms, uh, vendors, people who do business with the city, uh, you're gonna have a real hard time uh, running for mayor of the city of Houston. Now based upon this, and you didn't go into any depth, you didn't ask a lot of people about council, uh, no. but, but based upon what we're seeing here now, yeah. It, it, the council is just, it is wild west almost in it, terms of the number of people out there and what people may know about people running. Well, no, that's, and that's a great point. So if you look at someone like Sue Lovell or Dwight Boykins, who are better known than most uh, city council, or particularly Dwight Boykins, he's been running for mayor. He's better known than most at-large city council members uh, or people who are running. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it suggests that you know four fifths of voters, two thirds of voters, really don't know much at all about any of these candidates, and so therefore it's going to be a pretty random process for many of them in terms of who actually gets into the runoff. Although it does suggest that we're going to see quite a large number of city council runoffs where there's not an incumbent running and where you have a decent number of challengers. Well, I got to thank you for this deep dive into okay. the perceived <laughs> attitudes of people. Maybe it got a little geeky for some of you, but uh, you can never get too geeky on election balls. You, I know for you that's true. Yeah. yeah. But we thank you for uh, for coming in and doing this, and I'm, hopefully you were able to get something out of this and maybe help you decide what you want to do. And um, it, it doesn't matter what we say; it's all about what you do. And exactly. Go so thank you. Appreciate thank it as always. Thank you. So we're going to talk about this. Um, look ahead to where early voting starts right around the corner, and we're going to talk about that and look ahead to next week right after this. The 2019 Cadillacs are made to move and made to shine. Texas residents get this low mileage lease on this 2019 Cadillac XT5 from around $349 per month. Visit your Houston area Cadillac dealer today. This is Will preparing for takeoff. And this is a loving reminder from his wife. This is Will finally depositing that expense check. Oh, and this is Will paying his brother-in-law back with Zell for their annual camping trip. And this is Will finally relaxing for the long flight. This is your right here, right now bank. This is Wells Fargo. Ranger today with 0% financing for 60 months plus up to $2,500 in total savings. Hurry in to your best in Texas Ford dealer. looking at survey results this morning about a number of different topics but the reality is it is just a survey about what people think or what they say they will vote on and who they will vote for it means nothing until you actually go out and vote it's in your hands it is and always has been very important it is our right I want to remind you early voting is underway tomorrow election day Tuesday November 5th please make it a priority to go out and vote I want to thank Dr. Jones for joining me once again and thank you for joining me as well we look forward to seeing you back here again next week.